Imagine you're in a plane coming into land. You're just a few meters off the ground, there's a crosswind, and the plane is shaking all over the place. In those last few moments before you touch down, do you want this to be the pilot's first time landing or their hundredth? I think it's safe to assume that we'd all prefer the hundredth. And pilots train in simulators, like you see on the left here, to get through these first few landings. They need to be certified every single year in simulators before being allowed to fly with passengers. So why don't we expect the same for our surgeons? And the answer simply is that much of the technology for this is just now ready. Modern robots and computers have finally advanced to the point where we can begin making the simulators that surgeons need, like you see on the right. My goal is to make sure that by the time a surgeon does their first procedure on you, your grandparent, or on anyone else, that they've already practiced hundreds of times. My focus is in haptics, which is the sense of touch. And while they use all of their senses, where surgeons really stand out from you and me is with their hands. They spend years and years training to identify tissues and perform procedures in a safe way. Essentially, they've begun to learn to see with their hands by knowing the tissues or illuminating their path as they are digging in. However, this takes time, and it takes years and years of practice, and the hope is to use these simulators to train them before they actually encounter a person. There are a number of different types of tissues in the spine. They are very sensitive, and they have different feelings. You have muscles, you have nerves, you have, uh, you have discs. All of these are unique to feeling for a surgeon in their healthy states, in their unhealthy states, and in other ways. Um, when you think of a pilot in a simulator pulling up on a yoke, this type of feedback is pretty easy to do on a robot. However, these complex differences in the spine make it much more difficult to reproduce. And in the spine, only a couple millimeters is the difference between hitting a muscle or your spinal cord. I test these tissues so that I can understand how they feel, so that I can then inform a robot to give that feedback to a, a surgeon. These models that we build are so advanced that they have to be updated a thousand times per second to meet the surgeon's necessary level of accuracy. So we bring this to the surgeons, and they can test it and give us feedback and help us improve. By doing this with just the tissues from a couple cadavers, we're able to do this in a much safer way. We don't need to have every surgeon training on multiple cadavers, and we can get them that much more practice before they're on a real person. We've taken robots, like you see on the right, and added new features to them. So the ones that you see there give you force as you push in different directions. However, we've made a new one that gives you torque. So if you were to imagine you needed a procedure where there was something like a screw, like you're just a screwdriver, we now have a tool that clips in, allows you to get this type of robotic feedback, unclip, and continue the rest of the procedure. So we've made these existing tools more applicable that can now be used in different types of procedures than they've been able to in the past. So now, when the surgeon is performing a simulator procedure and it looks like they're touching muscle, it feels soft like a muscle. And if they dig a little deeper and hit a nerve or a bone, it feels like bone. This is all informed by this cadaveric tissue testing, which has allowed us to, in overall, use fewer samples. So now that we've built this simulator, we are bringing it to surgeons to see how they do. We're seeing if we can identify patterns between beginning and expert surgeons. We're seeing if they apply more or less force, force in different areas, if they touch certain tissues or don't. And all of these things we need to learn because we don't actually know what an expert surgeon does quite yet. The goal is that we can identify these patterns, use them to then educate these surgeons and turn these beginners into experts before they even touch a real person. So 
In summary, just like a pilot with hundreds of landings, only practice will get a surgeon to an expert level. The steep and frankly very risky learning curve for these first few landings or surgeries are where my research can help and I think that we can all agree that we'd like as many surgeons as possible to be experts before we or someone that we love meets them in the operating room. Thank you. <laughs>